Hello and welcome to your source for voice technology news, tips, and more for marketers, researchers, and the curious. My name is Jose Cotto and I am the Voice CEO. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. For you today, we've got the Marketers and Researchers Guide to Voice Assistance, Part 1. For marketers and researchers, voice assistants are the biggest opportunity for personalized engagement, brand building, and consumer empowerment that has, paradoxically, gone untouched except by the few with true vision. Understanding voice assistants, what they offer, and which best align with your marketing and or research goals is key to making that first investment into voice assistants a success. Let's start with a brief history of voice assistants. To say that voice assistants have the potential to dramatically shift how you live, work, and play is no understatement. The first time you ask your TV to play your favorite show using just your voice, you realize you'll never go back to that brick of a remote again. Today, voice assistants help us to do everything from ordering our favorite products to controlling our homes and appliances. There are few things that cannot be done faster and easier today using just your voice and a voice assistant. While the technology of voice assistance has never existed as it does today, the technologies behind voice assistants have. The first voice recognition software, for example, was created in 1952 by Bell Laboratories with the introduction of Audrey, arguably the grandmother to Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant. Though limited, Audrey was able to recognize numbers via speech. It wouldn't be another 10 years until IBM gave the world Shoebox, capable of understanding to and responding to 16 words in English. Jump ahead another 10 years, and in the 1970s, DARPA and the U.S. Department of Defense developed SIR, or the Speech Understanding Research Program, eventually making it possible for the Carnegie Mellon's Harpy speech system to understand over 1,000 words, about the same as your three-year-old. It wouldn't be until the 1990s that we finally experienced the first consumer accessible speech technology designed and developed by Dragon with Dragon Dictate and shortly later Dragon Naturally Speaking. Together these offerings advanced the ability to understand human speech significantly and captured the imagination of many consumers. But this was still more speech recognition than voice assistance. Then comes Bell South in 1996 when they introduce Val. No, not Hal. That doesn't come until much later. But Val, or Voice Activated Portal. This was the birth of IVR, or Interactive Voice Response, which started to create the response side of the voice assistant equation. Many advances continue through the years, but it wasn't until Apple's native integration and launch of Siri in 2011 that voice assistants gained mainstream attention and the first hint of its practical, real-world utility. Now millions of people have access to voice-based interactivity in the palm of their hands via iPhone. Apple Siri at launch was exciting, but we soon learned it wasn't yet practical for daily use by consumers. While the technology was exciting, it was still limited in what you could do. Understanding your speech was spotty and how you could leverage voice was limited mostly to asking for the weather or setting a egg timer. Jump forward a few years and something very special starts to happen. Siri learns new tricks, Microsoft introduces Cortana, and a few months later Amazon introduces Alexa into our homes. Two years later, Google Assistant comes home too. This becomes a pivotal time for voice assistants as they begin their meteoric journey to become fixtures in our lives, our homes, appliances, automobiles, and yes, still on our phones. The utility of voice assistants since those early days has seen exponential reach. Today, you can use voice to perform a dizzying array of tasks, play games, listen to books, get guidance, and more. It truly is amazing. Now, as amazing as it is all these things that we can do with voice assistants, we can't talk about them in any way without covering at least a little bit about the explosive growth and adoption that we've seen. 
Today, voice assistants, including Alexa, Google Assistant, Samsung Bixby, and Siri, are used by over 3.2 billion people across a multitude of devices, including smart speakers, appliances, automobiles, mobile phones, tablets, and more. I mean, even toilets are now coming with voice assistants. In the US, smart speakers alone are found in roughly 90 million homes with millions of consumers engaging voice assistants daily. If you go beyond these voice, uh, these smart speakers and you take a look at the full ecosystem of devices that support voice assistants, I'm talking about automobiles, phones, televisions, tablets, showers, toilets. I mean, a staggering 150 million consumers, more than half the U.S. population, use and engage with voice assistants every single day. Now, we got these numbers from a special report put out by Statistica. And Statistica's research estimates that consumer voice assistants or virtual digital assistants will reach an astonishing 8 billion devices and a considerable number of the world's population by 2023. These numbers translate to a projected forecasted consumer market value of well over $150 billion by 2023. And these are pre-COVID estimates. And since April of 2020, we've only seen an amplification an acceleration of user engagement and adoption of voice-first devices that will continue to drive voice-first engagement to the forefront via voice assistants and beyond. Now, when we want to talk about voice assistants today, we generally focus around the top four, Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Apple Siri, and Samsung Bixby. But there are quite a few specialty assistants out there as well, and quite too many to name here, but a few would be Hey Mercedes, part of the Mercedes-Benz user experience technology, IBM Watson, Microsoft Cortana, now found as part of the Windows operating system and Xbox, Hound from Houndify, and of course Dragon from Nuance Communications. Some of these voice assistants have very specific applications and capabilities. For marketers and researchers, navigating the voice assistant ecosystem and knowing which, how, when, and why to leverage a certain assistant over another in your projects can easily become a confusing experience. While there are a multitude of voice assistants out in the world, there are only a handful that are capable of adding true value to marketers and researchers today. These are voice assistants that have the necessary consumer reach and consumer usage to invest in. Let's have a look at the top assistants and what they offer. Let's start with Apple Siri. While arguably the first mainstream voice assistant to reach consumers at scale, Apple Siri, like the rest of the Apple ecosystem, has a very deliberate and controlled set of use cases. As of this writing, unlike other voice assistants, Apple Siri does not deploy a conversational API or SDK kind of experience. Except in a very limited scope, it's more of a request action via voice experience than anything else. Get the weather, turn off the lights, play some music, launch an app, that kind of stuff. For marketers and researchers, it's somewhat limited in how you can leverage Apple Siri for your campaigns. As of this writing, there are no provisions for creating what we refer to at True Reply as a conversational voice application. You can't create a pure voice experience that is not part of or anchored to a native iOS app. You can, however, develop for Siri, Apple Siri as part of a mobile iOS app experience. This manifests in the form of building deep linking like interactions via voice. For example, if you have a ride sharing app, you can integrate voice and allow Siri to accept voice commands like booking a ride. Unlike Apple Siri, Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Samsung Bixby all support voice-first conversational voice apps. With Amazon Alexa, you can create Alexa skills that allow consumers to engage via any Amazon Alexa-powered device. Think of an Alexa skill the same way you would think of an app on your mobile phone. An Alexa skill can be accessed by the entire line of Amazon Echo devices, as well as millions of additional third-party devices, appliances, automobiles, and more that currently support Amazon Alexa built in. Today, this includes offerings from Facebook, Kohler, BMW, Ford, Audi, and many more brands you'd quickly recognize. Alexa skills can create gaming experiences, tell stories, check in on loved ones, collect consumer opinions, control home products, and so much more. 
potentially a hybrid of both Amazon Alexa and Siri, Google Assistant supports both voice-first apps as well as voice apps that amplify mobile app functionalities. You need to be very intentional around your experience design, however, to leverage both at once. Voice apps for Google are called Google Actions, kind of along the same lines as Amazon Alexa skills. Now, while the footprint of OEM products are not as large with Google Assistant as they are for Amazon Alexa, the potential reach of Google Actions is considerably larger given the more than 500 million smartphones that currently have Google Assistant native to their operating system. Google Actions supports comparable features and functionalities as Alexa skills, so the type of experiences you can create via Google Actions are very similar, if not exactly the same. Arguably the new kid on the block, Samsung Bixby is Samsung's answer to Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Designed with a voice-first vision from the start, Samsung Bixby is the future of voice for Samsung's wide array of smart devices, phones, and appliances. Similar to Google Assistant, Samsung Bixby can be strategically deployed as both a voice-first app experience for all supporting Samsung devices, as well as a voice app that is tethered to a mobile app on Samsung phones. Conversational by design, voice apps for Samsung Bixby or capsules, so what would be an Amazon Alexa or Google Action, is called a capsule on Samsung Bixby, and they're capable of supporting conversational experiences on par with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Now, while the footprint of Samsung Bixby is considerably smaller than Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, especially in North America, given Samsung's drive for innovation in consumer electronics, the future is bright for Samsung Bixby, something to keep an eye on in the years to come. Voice assistants, in terms of a ubiquitous technology, have a little bit to go. I'd argue that voice assistants today misunderstand us about as much, if not less, than our significant others, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> that being said, thanks to advancements in machine learning, voice assistants' ability to understand your every word will get even better very fast. Within True Reply, for example, we saw an improvement in Google's speech recognition between 2018 and 2019 of nearly 10%. That is huge considering how well it was when we started. Improvements in speech recognition by all providers will continue at an exponential rate. When looking internationally, the technology needs to advance in how it understands different accents, dialects, nuance, speech, and so on. To me, this is less about speech recognition, but more about speech understanding, or more accurately, natural language understanding. Uh, it's referred to as NLU. I like to argue that NLU is not a computational science per se, but a linguistic science in which we strive to understand meaning from as much about context as intent and situation. That understanding is then bestowed on voice assistants through engineering marvels. While the technology is not perfect and still has a way to go, I mean, what technology doesn't really, right? The future, very near future for voice assistants, feels to me to be pretty obvious. It's right there from the moment you ask Alexa to continue your binge of the Queen's Gambit on Netflix and you get that instant result. The future of computing and interacting with our digital systems and environment will be built on a firm pillar of voice assistants and voice first interfaces. Mark Cuban is continuously quoted by the voice community as saying, there's no future that doesn't have ambient computing or voice activation. There is no future that doesn't have you talking to your environment to get what you need and do what you need done faster and easier than any other way. From marketers and researchers, this means there is no future that doesn't involve you leveraging voice assistance for your marketing and research efforts. This was part one of the Marketers and Researchers Guide to Voice Assistants, and you can actually catch this in blog form. Uh, we'll link to it in the show notes, or you can find that at truereply.com forward slash blog. This is a three-part series, so parts two and three will be coming at you soon. This is Jose Cotto, the Voice CEO, wishing you a fantastic weekend and a wonderful and healthy week ahead. For show notes, please visit truereply.com forward slash the voice CEO.